Hello everyone, and welcome to another iPixel video tutorial. Now in this video, I wanted to show you how you can make animated GIFs for your landing pages using Photoshop. So, let's get started. So here, I actually have a basic layout for a regular old call to action. It works just fine, but it could use some improvements. For instance, I could add a shine or a gloss, or I could add an animation which makes the image appear as though it's expanding and contracting. I could even add a rotation animation. So the first thing I'm going to show you is actually the shine and gloss. So to do that, I'm going to create a new layer. And in that layer, I'm going to define the space where I'd like my shine to initially start out. So with the marquee tool, I've selected a space. And with my bucket tool, I'm going to fill that up with just plain white. Next, over in opacity, I'm going to change this level down to something like 50%. Once we have our layer selected, we're able to move on to our next step, which is the animation. So to do that, we're actually just going to go up to the window tab here, scroll down to animation, and just click on that. Now this actually opens up our animation frames that we're going to use for our GIF. The next thing that we need to do is we need to copy this frame. So down here in Duplicate Selected Frames, we'll click that, and now we've got two frames. Now with the second frame highlighted, we're going to also make sure that we highlight our Shine layer, and we're just going to move this layer from the left all the way to the right. Using the Moving tool, we're just going to hold on Control and just keep scrolling to the right until our Shine layer is no longer in view. Now that our Shine layer is no longer in sight, we're going to just tween these two frames together. So we're just going to click on this icon down here. And in the tween width, we're going to go with previous frame. And for the frames to add, we're going to stick with something small like 10. We'll hit OK. And now if we click through our frames, we see a sequence that makes it appear as though there's a shine moving across our button. The next thing that we want to do is actually increase the delay between each frame. Right now it's at 2 seconds. I'm going to bring it down to something smaller, like five hundredths of a second. We'll just hit OK. And in the final frame, we're going to keep the time delay at two seconds. With this effect, we won't have the shine constantly moving across the button that might actually appear as annoying instead of attention grabbing. Now once we have our animation all set up, we can go up to File, Save for Web and Devices, and in this screen, we can actually preview what our final product is going to look like by just hitting Plays Animation down here on the bottom. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit choppy, so there's some other things that you can do to clean this up and make the animation seem a little bit more smooth. For instance, you can change the layer style of our shine layer, make it a little bit fuzzier, which actually increases the effect of motion. You can also go down here and change the time delay on each frame. Now to make it appear as our image is expanding and contracting, for each frame down here, we're actually going to need a new uh, unique image. So after I've duplicated my frame over in the layers, I'm going to duplicate the layer. We'll just hit OK. And then for the frame here, I'm actually going to hide this layer zero visibility and select the layer top layer copy. Next, I'm going to hit Control T, and this will allow me to change the size of my image. Up in the width and the height section, I'm going to change this to 95%. I want to make sure that the expansion and contraction of my image is a little bit more gradual than anything else. Next, I just repeat this process until I've reached a final image size uh, that I'm comfortable with. So, I'm just going to repeat this process a couple more times. Once we've reached our final layer size, we can actually start to go back a couple of frames. So we'll just create another frame. And here, we're going to drop down into a larger size. We don't have to create any more image sizes now because we're just going to reference what we've already created. We'll do the same thing. Next, we can change the time delay on all of our frames. Now when we go save for web and devices, we see that it looks like it's ever moving. Using the same method, instead of contracting and expanding the image, we can actually make it appear as though the image is rotating. So instead of changing uh, the width and height here, we can slightly change the angle to rotate. 
So if we do that by one degree, constantly changing for each new frame, we actually rotate a little bit more, we get a rotation effect, giving us something that looks like this, expanding and contracting, and like this, constantly rotating. Now, using the animation feature in Photoshop is actually just a great way to take otherwise lifeless buttons and suddenly make them pop out of the user. So try to mess around with this tool and see what you can come up with. Well everyone, thank you for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for our next post on how to create attention grabbing CTAs. And if you have any questions about anything that arose in this video, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Take care.